Hi, it's Monday, September 23rd. We're watching the development of a new storm in the Western Caribbean. The National Hurricane Center has initiated advisories on what they're calling Potential Tropical Cyclone 9, or PTC 9 for short. This has not yet actually become a tropical cyclone, but it's expected to soon, and that's why they're initiating advisories so that we can get watches and warnings out for Western Cuba and Northeastern Mexico, as this is expected to develop as it heads toward the Yucatan Channel over the next day and a half or two days. And then thereafter, it will move into the eastern Gulf of Mexico as a strengthening storm, likely a significant hurricane that will bring impacts to Florida midweek. And when it does form, it will be named Helene, which will be simpler, but PTC9 for now. If we look at the zoomed in visible loop this morning, we'll see that there is in fact a closed circulation. This is Grand Cayman right here into the south southwest of there. You will see closed rotation in the low level clouds. This little vortex here is embedded within a broader pocket of turning. You'll see low level easterlies north of Grand Cayman and then westerlies coming off of the coastline of Honduras. So there's this kind of broad pocket of turning right in here. Now the mid-level center is actually displaced southeast of here. So you'll see a little bit of mid-level turning, a little difficult to see in the visible loop, but it's near this cluster of thunderstorms to the southeast of where we see the surface low. So these two being dis, uh, misaligned vertically is a sign that this is still a developing system that will take some time to fully organize and begin intensifying with pace, but the environment will likely favor that over the coming two days. This is the water vapor satellite loop showing the deep moisture in aqua colors. This is the area where the circulation is and you'll see that there's aqua colors all around the Northwestern Caribbean. It doesn't get dry or black until you get into the Gulf of Mexico. The environment where the system is now is deeply moist and this is borne out by that visible loop where we don't see very many art clouds or collapsing thunderstorms north or west of the system center right now. There's a touch of southwesterly wind shear in the area. There's an upper level trough over the Yucatan Peninsula, southwesterly upper level flow passing over the northwestern Caribbean as a result, but there's not much dry air for that shear to push into the system. And for that reason, the environment should favor steady organization over the coming day and a half to two days. In addition, this upper level trough is expected to cut off and back away towards the west, reducing the values of vertical shear over the northwestern Caribbean as the developing storm moves towards the Yucatan Channel. This is the European model showing deep layer moisture in coloring, mid-level wind in wind barbs, and the surface low is shown in this black contours. You can kind of see where the circulation is. That's Grand Cayman right there. So similar to the satellite loop, here's where it is, southwest of the island. The mid-level center you can see is southeast of that. So you can see that disjointed circulation misaligned in the vertical on the model, similar to reality. But most models agree that vertical alignment of this vortex will occur as it moves toward the Yucatan Channel. So over the next couple of days, you'll see the model bring these closer together. And by the time it's in the Yucatan Channel, you can see they're stacked essentially on top of each other and a vertically aligned vortex would be able to intensify more quickly. This would likely be a named tropical storm named Helene by this time, and it would enter the Gulf of Mexico in an organized state. Some models are more aggressive with this timeline. This is the HAFS A model from NOAA, which may not be that skillful before the storm has actually consolidated, but it shows a stacked vortex or at least mesovortex within the broader circulation pocket south southeast of Grand Cayman in just a couple hours from the time of this recording. That seems unlikely to happen based on the satellite loop right now. But were it to get stacked a little earlier, it could result in a stronger storm entering the Gulf of Mexico. This shows a bona fide hurricane with a pressure of 970 millibars in the Yucatan Channel prior to moving into the Gulf. This would be ex an accelerated timeline where this is a significantly stronger storm than some of the other models. And we'll see how quickly this is able to come together. It might be a little slower than this, just based on the fact that it's, it's clearly not aligning right now. Uh, but it will eventually align. And the fact that this is a storm that has a day and a half to two days in the Caribbean to get itself together before it launches into the Gulf of Mexico means that we're likely to see a pretty significant hurricane in the Gulf. Whenever you have something that has time to become entrenched as a robust and resilient storm and then takes a day to a day and a half to cross the Gulf, it will likely be strengthening that whole time and most models agree a significant hurricane is coming and likely to threaten Florida. This is the upper level forecast from the GFS model showing the location of 
future Helene south of Grand Cayman. Upper level trough over the northwestern Caribbean right now, but as I said, this is going to back westward, and wind shear is expected to stay light near the developing system, so you'll see that happen. Maybe just a touch of southwesterly shear here, but not prohibitive and will not be able to prevent development. And what's going to happen here is as this storm nears the Yucatan Channel, there's a digging upper level trough over the south central U.S. So you'll keep an eye on this jet streak that's developing over the southeastern U.S. on the southeastern flank of that trough. And as the storm is entering the Gulf of Mexico, you see that jet streak accelerate and strengthen to beyond a 120 knot winds in the upper levels. And you can see that this is accelerating flow from the storm into the jet streak, that outflow connection is optimal at about this spot where it's moving into the southern Gulf of Mexico and this upper level divergence over this whole area would likely aid the intensification of this storm as it enters the Gulf and it would be paired with the upper level heat content or the ocean heat content rather that the storm will be tracking over during this time giving it fuel from the ocean as well as an optimal upper level configuration to intensify during the beginning of its journey across the Gulf. Now, eventually when the storm moves toward the Gulf Coast, that jet streak will go away and you'll see a broader pocket of flow here with southwesterly flow starting to hit the storm from the back side. At that point, there might be some additional shear and dry air that could arrest development somewhat, but this could already be a very powerful hurricane by the time it's nearing landfall. And most models agree on that point. There is still a range of outcomes here based on how quickly it gets itself together. Is it actually near hurricane strength near the Yucatan Channel before it starts its journey across the Gulf? That will determine a lot, but overall conditions will likely favor a significant hurricane, possibly a major hurricane in the Eastern Gulf. Now, as far as track goes, you saw what the GFS did here moving into the Big Bend area of Florida, and you can see this big upper level low over the south central U.S. Let's, let's dig into that just a little bit more. This is the European model, 500 millibar mid-level steering flow. This is showing where the developing disturbance is right now, and you'll see that there's a deep ridge over the north gulf coast and so at the moment that's actually blocking northward progress so all this easterly flow on the south side that's what's going to cause this to bend toward the west and toward the yucatan channel first so this is not going due north over cuba and towards south florida rather it will move west first but then this ridge is going to start shifting towards the east so you'll see that on the model here Moving through Tuesday, Tuesday night and Wednesday morning, you'll see the storm over the Yucatan Channel. The ridge has now shifted to the east of Florida. And so now the storm, after bending toward the northwest first, will turn toward the north around the periphery of this ridge as this deep layer trough builds in over the southern part of the U.S. So this is going to just set the edge of that ridge and the storm is going to track around it probably into Florida somewhere, but there are a couple of things that will determine exactly where. One is the launching point. You know, whenever we have a developing storm like this, it has not yet fully consolidated in a particular spot. If it's vertically decoupled like it currently is with the low and mid-level centers in different spots, you know, that represents some uncertainty. Where will the storm actually be when it enters the Gulf? It could be closer to the northeastern Yucatan. It could be closer to western Cuba. And so then from there, you know, where it goes will be very dependent on that launching point. The second source of uncertainty is that trough over the southern U.S., which over the next couple of days, we'll see two pieces of troughing kind of combine on the eastern side of an amplifying ridge over the Rockies. And this is going to drive this trough to dig and eventually cut off into an upper level low over the south central U.S. And you can see that this is almost a bowling ball shaped pattern here where the storm is entering the Gulf of Mexico and where this upper level low is will determine where the lane is toward the north northeast. There's a ridge off of the Carolinas right here the bowling ball over the south central U.S. and then the lane in between is where the storm is going to track. And so a combination of where the storm is on its launching point into the Gulf and the relative position of this upper level low and this ridge will ultimately determine the final track. Right now, most modeling is uh, aiming at Florida generally, the Gulf Coast of Florida, and you'll see that on the European Ensemble as an example where on Wednesday morning or afternoon, you'll see the cloud of red numbers here indicating the possible locations of where the storm is centered. You'll see that there is a range of outcomes from near the Yucatan Peninsula to near Western Cuba, and you'll see how those launching points 
cause a cloud of possibilities in the track where there's tracks that could be as far west as the western Florida Panhandle and tracks that could be as far east as the central Florida Peninsula on this particular model. But it's a good depiction of the overall range of uncertainty that we're currently dealing with and where this storm consolidates and where that upper level low is positioned will determine the final outcome. So important to note that there is still going to be some wiggle room in the final landfall point here, but most models agree that the Big Bend area of Florida, possibly further west into the Panhandle or further down the Florida Peninsula, could see a hurricane landfall. And again, most models agree that this will be a strong and strengthening storm as it comes into the coastline. So preparations should be beginning now if you live in this area of the coastline. This is the first advisory from the National Hurricane Center. Again, this is not yet a tropical cyclone, but it's expected to become one in short order. And so uh, tropical storm warnings in blue have been issued for northeastern Mexico and western Cuba. Hurricane watch is there as well. You can see that track bending towards the west and then turning towards the north as it enters the Gulf of Mexico, becoming a hurricane by Wednesday morning. Again, it will be important to see just how strong the storm actually is by this time, if it's actually a hurricane as it enters the Gulf, it increases the odds that this could be a major hurricane by the time it moves toward Florida a day and a half later. If it's a little slower to get going as it enters the Gulf, that would be good news and we'll be watching carefully for that over the coming 24 to 48 hours. As I said, this will cross the Gulf rather quickly. It'll take just over 24 hours to do it based on current modeling and the current NHC track takes this into essentially Appalachie Bay if you interpolate between these forecast points between Thursday and Friday morning. But again, there's some wiggle room here. You can see the cone. That's the typical error associated with National Hurricane Center forecasts. So everyone in Western Florida and the Florida Gulf Coast should be prepared and keep in mind that significant hazards will extend well outside this cone. So we're gonna be talking about a strong circulation pushing water ashore. We have experience with storm surge threats in Eastern Florida and especially the Big Bend area, even if the storm goes to your west. And so there will be widespread hazards here. This is the wind probability swath showing the corridor of wind risk, tropical storm force wind risk from the National Hurricane Center, possibly arriving in the Florida Keys as early as Wednesday morning, and then Wednesday evening to Thursday morning, spreading up the Florida coastline into the Panhandle and then into Georgia. There will be heavy rainfall associated with the storm over the next couple of days in the Northwestern Caribbean. We don't have good rainfall guidance just yet for the Southeastern US, but of course there will be heavy rains there. And of course, again, storm surge as this core of wind pushes water up along the Eastern Gulf Coast. That's about it for this video. I'll have another update tomorrow as we watch future Helene develop near the Cayman Islands moving toward the Yucatan Channel. Again, everyone in northeastern Mexico, western Cuba, and western Florida should be getting prepared for a possible hurricane strike later on this week. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.